Hello, Bill. Good morning, Matt. Welcome to the DMZ, everybody. Uh, a special pre-debate DMZ. So we uh, possibly the mo- will be the most watched debate of all time. Uh, and I'm going to celebrate it because it is serendipitously scheduled for my birthday. And I don't usually do birthday parties, but I'm, I'm, I'm hosting a uh, debate watch party uh, at one of the uh, local bowling alleys. It's, it's going to be a bowl, bowl and debate party. Uh, are you a are you a are you a bowl like are you a bowler norm, normally like do you are you in a league or anything? I I, I have wistful dreams of, of of my retirement joining a senior league, but I'm not currently. <laughs> I, I, mean, I I am very faithful to candle pin bowling. I I do not do regular bowling. Uh, but you don't roll on sh- on on Shabbat <laughs> or, or whatever. But your know, candle pin is a small ball. Uh, and the pins are thin sticks, and it is it, it basically makes everybody suck equally. There, no one, literally, no one in history has ever bowled a perfect three hundred game in candle pin. Uh, so when it, it's it's easy, you can pick up the ball a lot easier and, and roll it. You know, see, so even kids can do it easily, but it's hard to actually knock the pins down. So I think it's it's a great equalizer. Uh, and my typical birthday strategy. I don't like parties. You know, I don't like parties because they're work. <laughs> they're stressful to put together. Um, you got to – I'm, I'm not uh, – I don't want to have to, like, do like, tons of small talk all day. That's not That's not my idea of, like – Right. You know, well, that's the problem night. with the party is – the party is that you are that you do the work. You're, the person whose birthday it is has to be on all the time. Well, there's, there's that that's for the kind party of- itself. But there's also a, a level of stress that you're asking your loved ones to to, to throw this big uh, event for you, and you know my day and my wife's day are always you know packed to the brim schedule wise. Why do I want to add an extra burden on her? Uh, and how are you gonna? Here's the other thing. How are you gonna hear the debate with duck pen? You know, <laughs> well, we'll be in the bar. Crashing. We'll be in the bar for the debate. <laughs> okay. So we'll bowl first, and then and then retreat <laughs> to the to the to the adjacent lounge. Uh, but I mean, it, there's a, the downside of I me. Mean, I, a lot, a lot of times I want to watch a debate at home by myself so I can pay attention and it's yeah. a little hard at a party to do that, but it's, this is an historic debate. It, I feel like it should be a shared communal experience. Uh, but, and besides, honestly, like, has there ever been, I mean, I know that the food is, is ridiculously bad for you and, and, but has there ever been anything that tasted better than like a bowling alley French fry? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Their food is amazing. It's well, like this, a ballpark hot dog. There's something about uh, the food at these bowling alleys. I go, I go there just just to eat. Well, I agree with you, but the bowling alley that I'm going to is super old school. This is like a you know 100 year old candlepin bowling alley. Uh, so they they don't have a restaurant in the back. Uh, you know they they serve alcohol and there's a vending machine and then that's it. Uh, but uh, uh, but I, I to answer your other question. I like. Are you the, bringing in a cake at least? What's that? You got to have the cake. We're well, bringing in a we're cake. Bringing, at bringing least. in a cake. Tell bringing me. in a cake. Okay. Um, but I like to find a way to bowl every birthday because it usually no one wants to go bowl with me. So my, my basic birthday strategy, because I don't like parties generally. Yeah. Uh, this is how I. This is how I've, I've hacked the birthday. I basically take the weekend. I send an email to my friends and I say. Here are the things I am going to do for my birthday. <laughs> I am going to get up at 6 in the morning and go on a donut run. I am going to go to a roadside barbecue shack for lunch. I am going to go hit three obscure used bookstores and look for presidential biographies. Bill, Bill Sherry, you brilliant son of a bitch. I'm going to go. You finally crack, you finally <laughs> crack the code. I'm gonna go candle pin bowling. I'm gonna do this or that. You know, sometimes I mix it up. I go to the go to the the trolley car museum or something like that. You know, whatever whatever thing that I want to do that I know nobody wants to do with me, I say I am doing these things, and you may join me or not join me for whichever part of the schedule you wish to do. That's your business, but I'm doing this regardless. Uh, Man. Living the dream. <laughs> You've cracked the code. This is great. So the downside, the one downside of this is, uh, you know, my kids want a party. 
They want a big party, yeah. and they want a cake, and they want me to open a lot of presents, and they because th- th- their associated with birthdays are, are parties. Uh, yeah, and- I, I have the same. I have the same issue. I feel like I let my kids down <laughs> by uh, by not really. They they want that. I think it's good for them to have that communal experience. It's like a rite of passage. I felt bad by not. By not making my own birthday a bigger deal this year, I, I generally wriggle out of it because they like the bowling, and I can usually get you know some people to come for the bowling, and it, it feels party-ish. But after it's all over, they're like, "Well, where was the cake? We didn't get any cake out of that." <laughs> there were no hats. <laughs> I, I saw two balloons. That's nothing. <laughs> and I can't have them come to the debate party because it's too late. You know, I can't. What I can't have them stay up, you know, till eleven o'clock at night on a school night. And two, I'm not sure I want to subject them to 90 minutes of Trump. I don't know if that's healthy for their for their upbringing. Um, so I, I, I may have them stay out late for election night. I feel that's that that's going to be special. But at least they won't be subjected to yeah. you know Trump bring up told, every possible I just told my oldest, scandal. I just told my oldest boy that if the Orioles make the World Series, he can stay up late and watch. <laughs> which is which is a which is a, a possibility that I that I have no fear will actually happen. So you so, you, you told me um, you told me that your that your sons were actually supporting Hillary. Uh, may, are your sons supporting the Red Sox? I mean, how far, how bad a parenting job have you done yeah. here? No, 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 no. They they're <clears throat> they're Orioles fans, <clears throat> both of them. So don't have to worry about that. Can they can they sit through? No, there is a danger the though that. Uh, the father, uh, I took Burke to a, a Diamondbacks game a couple last year, um, but I've not exposed him to to schlepping out to Baltimore yet because I don't think he can sit for nine innings yeah. without, you know. We, we went to like, you know, going to an Arizona Diamondbacks game is like going to a Frederick Keys minor league game. <laughs> Nobody gets excited. You just eat like, they have like gourmet food there even. It's like, you know. Um, and, and, and so I, I, that's what we did someday. I'll, I'll, I'll take him to a game. Now the, the danger though, this has not been a problem yet, but the danger is that my father-in-law and brother-in-law are huge Yankees fans. And that could someday be, uh, pose a problem. Cause why wouldn't you want to be a Yankees fan? It's, it's like a charmed, it's a charmed existence. Being a, like signing up as an Orioles fan. though. Exactly. Signing up for an Orioles fan is a character-building, uh, pride-swallowing, annual exercise. Well, you know, as a as a North Melbourne Kangaroos fan, I, I, I suffer that. Uh, I, I walk that difficult path. Uh, just this year, they started the year nine and zero, and then dropped almost every one of their games after that. <clears throat> just barely made the playoffs and got knocked out in the first round. So we're down to. As I'm sure you're aware, we're down to this. You're telling, yeah, you're I'm saying you're saying this as if I'm not, <laughs> as if I'm not aware of this. Come on, this is common knowledge. <laughs> well, we're at the we're at the semifinals. Uh, Hawthorne, uh, I, I believe they won the last three grand finals. They got knocked out, so we'll have a new champion this year. Uh, and there's a chance that one of the uh, expansion teams, Greater Western Sydney. Might get into the final, the grand final with 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 the Sydney Swans. Have an all Sydney final. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm not. That's the end of my AFL history. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Uh, so we'll. Well, I think this this needs to be included in your birthday email. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> People have a choice. The grand final typically is around my birthday, and I will have a grand final showing at my house. Uh, which again, people get you what you want to do it fine. If you don't, you don't. Yes, that that that's that how I extend my birthday several days after the fact. I like that you you've got options for your friends. Uh, maybe they're busy in the evening; they could hang out in the afternoon. No pressure. A la carte birthday. You don't have to do. Yeah, I like that. I I I have a similar thing with my wife. Um, I can't really talk about the a la carte options on the menu here. But we celebrate <laughs> birthday differently in my house. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> you, you frisky mix that, Lewis. <laughs> well, you got me on that. Uh, let's speaking get, let's of the debates. Debate. Let's get back to the debate. <laughs> I actually think this is going to be uh, a, a fascinating debate. Uh, I, I, I generally believe that Trump is a bad debater. I don't buy the notion that he won all the primary debates. I I would argue he lost all the primary debates and then won the post-debate 
by doing crazy things that kept him in the media, and maybe he'll forget about what actually happened at the debate. Uh, so, uh, but and this time he doesn't get to hide behind nine other people. It's one on one for ninety minutes. Uh, hypothetically, he'll have to go deeper on issues than he's used to, although that is contingent on what kind of questions the moderators ask. Uh, so I don't want to necessarily assume that. Um, and, and so I think how he, if he, I don't know if he can do a barrage of insults for, for, for his 45 minutes of time, nor do I think he would look all that well trying to be <laughs> faux presidential, like he's staying next to the Mexican president and talking in his, in, 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 his, in his inside voice for 45 minutes. I know how impressive that would be. Uh, and for Hillary, uh, clearly she would prefer to uh, strike a more presidential pose, ju juxtaposed next to him. But if he is, you know, throwing the muck, I assume she's not going to sit back and take it. She's going to, you know, uh, give as well as she gets. But to the extent that, that they, it becomes a total, uh, you know, mud, uh, you know, mudslinging fight, that harms her ability to uh, take this opportunity to improve her likability and say, okay, everybody, I know you, you, you really hate him. You're kind of down on me. I want you to get a little like, a bit excited about me and excited about me being president. If I'm just throwing punches left and right, that's not going to, you know, it, people are going to walk away feeling, you know, despondent over both of the choices. Uh, so I, I feel it's, it's, it's difficult terrain for both of them. It's not that easy for either one to escape with a real warm feeling at the end of it. So I think I have a different take. Um, I guess, first of all, I, I, if you're Hillary Clinton, it's gotta be really hard to prepare for this debate. You, you've got a completely unpredictable candidate. You know, he could come out and, and start talking about Monica Lewinsky and, um, or he could, try to be presidential. It's really unpredictable. And I think just in terms of psychological warfare, I don't know who's portraying Donald Trump in these mock debates, but it has to be really hard to game out uh, what you think, which Donald Trump shows up, what you think he's going to do. Um, I think that's part of what's going to make this a, a, a exciting, you know, I, who knows if the debate will actually be good, but I think the hype is huge. This is like, um, you know, again, politics, the stakes are high, the consequences are serious, but, you know, political junkies, this is sort of like, you know, the first NFL game, uh, I don't know, it would, it would be like if the first NFL game were also uh, the Super Bowl or something. It's a big, it's a big deal. Um, I do think the other problem Hillary has, frankly, is that the, the bar for Trump is pretty low. I mean, I think that if he does okay... That he'll be declared the winner, um, but, but so, I, feel, I feel Trump has so, set Hillary's bar low. You know, Trump is saying, "I don't know if she has the stamina to get through a debate." So <laughs> all she has to do is you know, not have pneumonia and be a crisp, you know, uh, you know, engaged figure, and put that question to rest. Well, I don't, I don't know though. I mean, if you think about how the media is going to frame the debate. The assumption, I think, is that Hillary Clinton's vastly more knowledgeable, vastly more experienced, and that she should win. That she, you know, and, and so if Trump, if Trump comes out, and see, I, I will say, I think Trump does have a difficult task, and that is, I think he needs to sort of walk this line. On one hand, I think he needs to be a little fun, a little light, and a little irreverent. On the other hand, I think that there is, you know, even though we've experienced this cultural degradation, the defining deviancy down and all of those things, I still think there is a, a, a threshold uh, of which you have to, you know, transcend in order to be considered viable to be president. And Trump has to, I think, meet that threshold. He has to be minimally exceptional to Americans as president. Um, so, but I think that there is, there is a way for him to sort of have his birthday cake and eat it too, Bill. Um, but can he do it? Will he do it? That is why we'll be tuning in. Well, this was, you know, that was the bar that Reagan cleared in the 1980 debate, where they, they had one debate, you know, they, there, was, there was a lot of debate negotiation, and they finally agreed to one at the very end, and people thought that, Re you know, Carter was unpopular, but people were hesitant about Reagan, didn't know if he was really up, up to the task, and then when he sounded 
presidential and poised and very, you know, calmly parried the attacks that Carter threw at him, you know, where are you there ago again? Are you better off than you were four years ago? You know, that was the, that was the clincher, uh, which is unusual for a debate. Usually you don't have a single debate. Usually it's not that close to election day. Uh, and normally the bar isn't set that low for uh, a, a, a competent performer to clear. Uh, and I think you had that with the Obama-McCain debates where you know, Obama already had, already had the edge going in. But there was that question, is this you know, political neophyte able to go toe to toe with a with 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 a veteran, you know, political veteran, you know, military veteran like like John McCain? And Obama gave a confident performance, and that was sort of the final bar he had to clear. Um, so if you if you're counseling Donald Trump, and obviously Kellyanne Conway's her role in this is to try to make him as presidential as possible, um, and may, and maybe Roger Ailes, right? Right. We don't know for sure the extent of his involvement, but this is a guy who uh, certainly knows something about coaching candidates for debates. But I, I don't feel like we've really seen Trump kind of hit that sweet spot. He either goes, you know, way into irreverence, to be to use a charitable word, uh, or or he's soporific the way he was with the Mexican president. Uh, are, do you feel like he has to kind of blend? the two personas to pull this off? Or do you feel like that's asking too much of this guy? He really only has two two positions here, and he's got to pick one. Well, I think that I, to some degree, I think he has to balance these two things. You know, I think he has to, um, he has to be likable and fun, but I also think he has to be minimally presidential. <laughs> Maybe I'm coining a term. <laughs> um so, uh, but but I think that this you know, this is a this is a balancing act. But but I think it's within his. I think he could possibly do it. It's not. There, there are different ways. I'm not. It's not like he doesn't have to walk the line. It's not a thin line he has to walk. I think there's some some room to maneuver uh, where he can hit that sweet spot. Um, I think that, you know, I think Hillary's challenges are probably harder because of the expectations and because of the unpredictable nature of Trump. Um, you don't know what he's going to say or do. The other X factor, of course, is the, um, the debate moderator. And, you know, I think that the Trump people are, are clearly uh, throwing out warning signs that, that any, um, any attempt to, to sort of um, bias this toward Clinton will be met with with intense pushback. But, you know, obviously, if you wanted to make Donald Trump look bad, you would try to get him into a situation that clearly demonstrated that Hillary was vastly more knowledgeable about some detailed policy proposal than Trump. So how does he, how does he, um, you know, how does he parry that? That's going to be interesting. Well, I, I, before I, I want to delve into the moderator question just a second, but I want to just finish up the Trump discussion. So, it, to be minimally presidential, <laughs> does that mean that he should not throw the kitchen sink at Hillary? Should he not attack her on her health or her stamina? Should he not bring up the foundation? Should he not bring up Bill Clinton's uh, uh, scandals, real or imagined? Uh, uh, should he stick to making a positive case for himself? so he can meet that presidential threshold or is his only path to victory tearing Hillary down and not worrying about that? That is a, that is a serious question. I, Bill, I, 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 I'm sort of torn. Um, I'll sort of walk through my, my, my thinking on this. Um, so, okay. So one of the things that, that people like you and me have had to do during the course of this election is concede that that conventional wisdom and, and political, uh, you know, maxims aren't always true anymore. Like things that we would have always thought are out the window. So I question my own judgment. Um, you know, I would say that that my natural inclination would be to say, of course, you don't uh, talk about Monica Lewinsky, um, but. 
then I second guess myself because Trump has changed the game and um, and and doing it could elicit uh, an unpredictable response from Clinton. It could get under her skin. It could ruffle her feathers. It's a form of psychological warfare. Um, also, it's Trump being Trump. You know, if Trump tries to be something other than himself, that may not work. It, it may be that Trump's better off being Trump. So I, I am really torn. I don't even know. I mean, if I'm Kellyanne Conway or, or Roger Ailes or whoever, I, I don't even know what advice I give there. What, what's your thinking? I mean, I said from the beginning, and I wrote that piece back in, back, back in March, How Trump Beats Clinton, where I said... I don't think your path to victory is the uh, seemingly obvious path of trying to tear Hillary down versus scandal because conservatives have been trying to tear Clintons down with scandal for decades and it hasn't worked. Uh, you need to. This is different. This is different. This isn't talking about white water or travel gate. This is um, this is showing that she is weak and vulnerable and raising questions about her truthfulness uh, that, and, and, and whether or not she's corrupt. Um, all of these things um, transcend like any one scandal. So the, these are more like character. These are more, I don't know, character or fitness questions than they are well, scandal. I think questions. it's baked in that people think Hillary is, you know, to varying degree, not on the level. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying it's my personal view, but I think that's that's common perception. She is a typical politician, can't trust her, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yet she is still winning. I mean, we, we can talk about the polls being tight, tightened and whatnot, but even in the, in the tightened polls, uh, I'm, and I'm sorry to be a broken record about this, Trump has never broken 45 in the real clear politics average, say for one day after the convention. Uh, and that's even though the real clear policy includes polls like the LA Times poll and the, and the Rasmussen poll, which have been very clear outliers in his favor. Uh, I've been doing my own big five poll average on Twitter, which is just ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN, same five polls that the debate commission uses. Uh, so it's uh, in, in that average. You know, Trump's actually a little bit better in that average than real clear politics right now because the CNN poll uh, and the uh, I think the Fox poll and uh, were strong for him, right? Because those are taken right after the pneumonia episode. Uh, he's at 44.7 right now in that poll. And that's his high water mark. And, and since I've been doing that uh, in late May, uh, I, I don't believe that as things as he has run this race to date, he has not really gone beyond consolidating that Republican base. Uh, so he needs to do something more than he has been to win and just recycling the attacks i don't think gets him there he i, I agree with you he needs to cross the threshold of being a commander-in-chief and that and, and as i wrote back in march that means having actual policies and talking about them cogently so people think yes i can envision you in the job no right. one no one's going to pour through the details of the policy positions but you want to have a general sense that you know what you're talking about and know what you're gonna do once you get there not just uh, trust me, I know what I'm doing. I can fix it. That 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 only gets you so far. So I I would think that he needs to uh, really. I mean, I mean, if if he did not attack Hillary once in the debate and actually talked, it, 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 it'd be super deep, but just deeper than he has been on policy. The pundits would go, "Wow, oh my God, this is a brand new Trump. He's really he is really stepping up his game here." If it's just same old, same old, I mean, I, I feel like their convention speech was like that. That's just like more of the same attacks, and it gave them a one-day bounce, and that was it. Right. Um, I think the question, two problems with that. One is, um, one is can, it's sort of like cramming for the SATs. Yeah. If it's I, about I, policy, <laughs> how do you comp compare, compete with someone who spent, you know, a quarter of a century at least engrossed in policy how do you how do you like cram for that well, the week before and he's, and he's done nothing to date to queue up uh, a strategy like that so yes i i agree what yeah. i what i would recommend is very hard for him to pull off in a three day a three day window um, and, and and the other question and the other thing would be um 
if you're Trump and you've gotten this far by going with your instincts and and trying to upset the apple cart and and play by your own rules, you know, I Trump just like a psychological profile of him. I I, I would be surprised if he decides to change up um, and and surprise people. I, I think it's more likely that he would sort of stick with what you know what has gotten him this far, and that suggests that he's going to be on the attack and he's going to be um, aggressive, and that would be that could be very fun to watch. It could put Clinton in a difficult position, um, but it doesn't help him pass that become minimally accept- acceptable <laughs> as. Uh, as a presidential candidate. Now, before we get to that moderator question, I'll ask you this about Hillary. Should Hillary strike first? Should she show strength and not wait for Trump to throw muck at her? Should, he, should she go right at him on the Trump Foundation or right at him on, on race and immigration? Uh, or should she try to... Uh, give people a positive reason to vote for her first and foremost and do her best to ignore whatever Trump throws at her. And if he, and if he doesn't, if it's just two of them being nice, that she she will invariably be the better of the two because she can speak more cogently about policy. Uh, and if Trump if, and if Trump punches first, well, then she can punch back. People will understand. But she wants but with an eye towards being careful not to go too far down the muck because she should try to end the debate with people saying, I feel good about you as commander in chief. This is a chess game, Bill, the intrigue. Uh, and, and I think you could argue it either way. Um, you could certainly argue that Clinton should come out swinging. Um, I say what you need to, my theory is you need to have some attacks chambered. You need to have not some, a lot of attacks chambered, but I say uh, you you don't start there um, because um, I think that that number one, you know, this is like the a baseball batter. You know, you take a couple pitches. You know, you want to get a look at it first. Um, I, I think that um, if, if she goes on the attack, that creates a permission for Donald Trump to 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 fight back um, and. And that takes away one potential argument, um, spin post debate, you know, which is, uh, you know, he beat up on the girl. It's hard, harder to make that argument. It's harder to, to make that insinuation, at least, if, if she comes out guns a blazing. Um, but, you know, have those attacks chambered, be ready to hit him hard if and when the moment arises that, that you need to do that. I, I think I agree with you, but just to play play devil's advocate, I mean, and some of the early uh, positioning and trash talking that we've heard from the camps, we, some of the Clinton people have been saying, we want to get under his skin. So, yes, by attacking first, you give him, you give him permission to attack you, uh, and you don't get the benefit yeah. of... Uh, well, maybe there's, a way of, maybe there's a way of doing it. Maybe, you know, there's a way to get under his skin that that the audience will perceive as a joke. Mm-hmm. So you don't come out and be like, and let me tell you something, Donald Trump, you are a horrible person and you've inspired your right wing anti you know, you don't do that. Maybe it's like, um, uh, you know, a joke about uh, Melania's plagiarism, that wouldn't work, but you get the idea, right. like something that's that's a, a joke, but is gonna get a rise out of him so that the audience perceives it as funny, but he, uh, will probably be thin-skinned and perceive it differently. So let's go back to the moderator question. People are going to be, you know, we, we already saw with the Matt Lauer Commander-in-Chief Forum event, there's going to be a massive focus on the moderators. I, I actually, it, it, even more so, we've been used to certain moderators. You know, Jim Lehrer did it forever, and Bob Schieffer did it forever. And these were, you know, really, and I forgive me for being a little... Um, disrespectful to a couple of legends. You know, they're bland moderators, particularly Jim Lair. I mean, these are guys who tried really hard not to be the news. 
uh, and give very simple questions and let the candidates go at it. Uh, and so they got, I think, m minimal brushback uh, when it was all over. Whereas, you know, Candy Crowley makes one comment, one attempt at fact checking. Um, I can't remember what Gwen Eiffel said, but I think she said something that conservatives got mad at. Um, you, you and I have talked, gone many rounds over George Stephanopoulos' primary question about contraception to uh, to Mitt yeah. Romney in the Republican primary. You know, seemingly that a, that was a complete non sequitur. <laughs> that that coincidentally laid the groundwork for the entire war on women argument. Yes, it's all it's all Stephanopoulos' father. Republicans right a step with the country. So uh, <laughs> no, it just it's, it seems incredibly coincidental that that question was asked. Uh, but now you have a whole bunch of moderators who have not done it before, um, who are going to be. Who's the first? Who's the first? Uh, who's the first moderator? We got Les Lester Holt. So Lester Holt's the first. Who I okay. would think it would be. I heard he's a Republican. Is, so, is that true? You know, Trump, Trump Trump made a, a glib comment that he was a Democrat. Then people checked the records, and in fact, he's a registered Republican since two thousand and three. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's great. Um, so you have, you have one registered Republican for the first debate. You have a Fox News moderator for the third debate, and Chris Wallace. Um, but uh, so maybe so maybe Trump's all of Trump's uh, work in the refs before the game even started paid off. Well, I think there was some political article about that suggesting that Lester Holt was was and Wallace were picked. Uh, someone in the NBC family who uh, Trump is comfortable with, and and someone from Fox. Uh, so uh, that could, that could well be, but. You ha so you have Trump working the ref saying, I don't, don't go be a Candy Crowley now. And you have the pile on that Matt Lauer got out of the commander-in-chief form, which uh, really took a toll on his reputation, seemed to really have shaken NBC News. Lester Holt being in NBC News is acutely aware of that. Uh, so how do you avoid uh, being a punching bag? And uh, the Stephanopoulos episode notwithstanding, I would think you know a safe way to go would be Lots of policy questions because the, if the Trump complaint is, how dare you ask me policy questions, that's not a very strong complaint to bias. It's your job to know the policy, not the moderator's job to to dumb down the questioning for you. Uh, so I, I would think that would be a safe way for a moderator to go. Uh, whereas if you do a lot of, you know, kind of airy fairy questioning, you know, what, you know, what, what, what is, what is your strong suit and what is your, what is your, what is your, your, your weak suit, uh, that kind of lame questioning that you can easily elide, you know, I, I think that's going to get people to say, look, you're trying to, uh, make this easy for Trump. Well, and that would be bad, you know, if, if they do what you, what you suggest, that would probably be bad news for Trump. The other thing which we've talked about before, but it, it bears repeating, um, is that, you know, I think Trump, sort of like Newt Gingrich, really thrived off of the audience's energy and the applause. That's usually not permitted um, in these presidential debates. I think there will be an audience, but um, they will probably be cautioned against any sort of cheering or noise yeah, that, get, that, um, that gets shut down pretty quick in these debates these days and and now that also that that's a, so that hurts trump that, that's a probably. that's a general if, disincentive to throw the insult because you try to throw some sort of funny insult and no one's allowed to laugh that, that yeah. it, it doesn't feel like you landed the punch totally it, 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 you know you really can't uh overestimate the difference that 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 can make i mean you know remember remember the john king debate where newt gingrich um, he asked Newt Gingrich about, uh, was it a threesome or something? I don't know what it was, but whatever the controversy about Newt was, um, it was, it was open it was marriage, infidelity. <laughs> forget what, it was something weird, but Newt just like, uh, went after him. And I think the only reason it worked, it worked amazingly I mean, he, well, he but I think it's because the audience and the audience was really into it. They were cheering. They were laughing. It was it was great TV. But if the audience, if there were like say there were no audience there, it would have fell flat. So, um, just like just like I just did just there <laughs> with, with no applause and no and no cheering. <laughs> um, it's just silence. Well, crickets. Uh, anything else you think we should discuss before we before we call it a day? 
No, no, no. This is good. It's been a de- uh, there's some depressing stuff out there. Uh, really depressing news. Uh, the Orioles, as we taped this, have dropped three straight to the Red Sox. Uh, don't want to talk about that. And they're pl- they got a fourth game coming up. Um, and uh, that's the least of the depressing stuff out there. So uh, we'll talk debate and birthdays. That, that's a that's a good show. That's why people people don't tune in for the doom and gloom. They <laughs> they they tune into this show in record number. For the the banter, uh, and and now I have a new birthday tradition to tell my friends. About. Wait, wait, what's what's the one thing that you always want to do to the year and you never get to do? Ah oh, man, I have to see. I have to think through it because this is actually a good intellectual exercise. Is is like what if I could just impose my will on people? Yeah, like I am doing this. My birthday, we just, we just celebrated it uh, in September, so um, I could st- I could do like I could play tennis outside. Um, I could go to a base. I could certainly go to a baseball game. That could be an annual uh, annual tradition. Um, you know, I could. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, I you can do. get a whole year to so think I about. Need to... Yeah, the problem with my birthday is it's right around, around right around the time school goes back, and. Um, it's kind of a busy time of year when like people come back from vacations and people go back to school. So that's, that's a little bit, um, it's a little bit harder. So, you want, but I got a year to one, think one about of the downsides it. For me now, I probably there's a lot of, a lot of kids have birthdays on my weekend. Uh, there, there, must, there must be something about, about, about conceiving in, in, uh, in the winter that, that leads to last September birthday. Uh, so you have to go back nine months. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do the math, right. but, uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I, so my weekend is somewhat complicated by my kids having to go to other people's birthday parties. But then I could say, look, I'm going to the used bookstore now. See you guys. Maybe it's people off for Christmas holidays or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, I like the used bookstore idea. I'm not much of a bowler. I do like the used bookstore. Nothing better. Well, nothing better than a bookstore, number one. And uh, a used bookstore is very good. And, and I... Uh, I'll remind you, one of the best gifts that I've received, it wasn't a birthday gift, but one of the best gifts I've received, and I've received some good gifts. I got a, I got a really cool Orioles hoodie from uh, from one of my good friends this year. But one of the best gifts I received was a uh, copy of Whitaker Chambers' Witness, uh, first edition that, that someone found at a used bookstore and sent me. So we do take tribute here. <laughs> Um, that, that, if you that, that if you want to send us Brattleboro, Vermont, you know the, the People's Republic of Brattleboro, uh, uh, but uh, if, if but there may be there may also be viewers or listeners out there who would like to send tribute to us, and we should not we, we should allow that. So <laughs> um, do it. You can find me. You, you track me down. I don't I don't want to make it easy for the haters uh, to find me, but it's 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 doable. It's, what do you got, what do you have to plug before we go? Check out my roll call column um, about me- media bias this week, and check out the podcast Matt Lewis and the News, and that's about it. Bill, you? Uh, I should have something in the New Republic in a couple days, if not maybe later today. Um, I won't, uh, I won't reveal the topic yet, but you know, keep an eye on the New Republic site, and um, uh, I and I will have a real clear politics column on um, Monday before the debate, so I. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, if you, if you hadn't seen, um, I think we I, I think we, we we talked about the deplorables. P. We talked about that by Hillary Clinton's piece on the deplorables and political. That was last week. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I got. Yeah, Pepe the Frog and the deplorables. <laughs> you, you know about Pepe the Frog, Bill? Have you been following this? Uh, I, a little bit. I, I got to say, some of these things I don't want to track down. And find out too much. <laughs> well, if you want to know about that, uh, Google it. But it's it's one of those alt right memes, and or it's been taken over by the. Right. Alt-right. I saw an interview by the guy who did, did the frog initially. He's kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know, people like my, car, my people like my frog. They do it for all sorts of things. You know, what are you gonna do? It's that's the way of the world. <laughs> well, I think Pepe the Frog belongs to the ages now. None of us own him. He's he's he belongs to the ages. He's out there. So. All right, uh, see you all next week, and uh, check us out on Twitter at DMZ Show. Um, Bill, we'll have to talk, but uh, I think we should do, uh, eh, we'll talk offline. It'd be great to do a post-debate show. I don't know if we can make it happen, but 
It'll be a post debate show one way or the other. It might be forty eight hours after. So, we'll, we'll, we'll work, we'll work all right, it out. see you guys. Bye. All right, have your your people call my people. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.